Okay, so let's talk about uh, creating a velvet material. And I've got some references and images here. So you can see um, what we're looking at and what we're trying to replicate in 3ds Max and V-Ray. And you'll just see here, you know, the light on the top, the light on this angle where the light is, and then very dark. So you get these vast differences relatively quickly. And that's really what we're dealing with. So how do we get this? How do we recreate this type of material with the lights and the darks in uh, V-Ray? So really what you're looking at is a fall off. Uh, we've got here, I'll show you how it's created. This is a very simple material. This renders very quickly and looks really pretty good. This is the image. This is the, uh, the JPEG that we're using. If I... Here, it's right here. So this is the velvet. This is, um, you know, that's the sort of material that we're looking at. That's the sort of, of image you need to have when creating it. And you can take that in Photoshop and make it different colors. You know, I think it started off green or it started off another color. Someone made it green and I made it this color. So you can do that in Photoshop. The easiest way to do it in Photoshop is open with uh, all we need to do is go layer new fill layer solid color and then pick the color you want say okay change it to color and you get the color and then you can add a levels and then you can adjust these points you know bring down the whites a bit If you like, you can adjust the saturation here with the saturation layer. If you like, you can get it, you know, then you can save that out and that's your new color. So that's really the way I adjust this, this color, this one that we're working with here. All right, so you put it in, then you want a color correction, um, which is over here in your material editor. You go uh, maps, general, color correction. And you just drag and drop it into the line there. And with this, all I've done is gone advanced and just pushed this up, made this lighter. So when I was rendering, I just thought, mm, you know, one was a little bit too dark for me and I made it just a touch lighter. Then you take another color correction and you put this into the second color correction. And this one, you know, we made quite a bit, I made quite a bit lighter here. I made it 2.8. So you just come over here on the color correction, click advanced and make that brighter and then you've got a fall off map which is over here you just double click bring the fall off map in put this into the map one and put this into map two and you'll notice these look quite different here and that's because here this mix curve is what's been adjusted also here you've got the two colors coming in and this fall off type has been turned to, towards away so you take this it's perpendicular parallel. Now, just to go over how this fall off works, here it says front and side, and that means the top one here is the front, and the next one here is the side. And it's the same with all of this. Perpendicular is here, and parallel is there, right? Um, if you put Fresnel on, then it's going to be Fresnel, and it's going to have, that's going to be front directly looked at, that's going to be on the edges, you know, shadow and light, distance blend, in this case, we put towards and away, and then we have to adjust this mix curve. So this one here was adjusted like that. Okay, it's just a point there and a point here. So you can do the same here. You just click on here to add a point, or you don't even have to add a point, actually. You can just right-click on this and go Bezier corner, and then drag that down to there, and then click on here and go Bezier corner, and drag that up to there. And you get something like that. And the other one is even more, is even sharper, so. That's it. So, and that gives you your mix curve. You know, you can drop this back if you want. Or where it's light, like on the far side, it's going to keep going light, 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 light. Then it's going to suddenly drop to dark. But the angle is going to be, most of it's going to be light. 
and only a little bit of it is going to be dark. So if you look at the render, which is here, it comes in like this. So here you get the lightness, and then here you get the darkness, the sudden darkness. Here you have the lightness on the side and the darkness. Here it's a little bit lighter, but that gives you that that sudden fall off. You get light and then suddenly it's dark. Light and suddenly it's dark. And if you look at the reference images, that's really what you have. You have light and then it's suddenly dark. So you see, light, suddenly it's dark. Light, it's dark. And that's really what we're looking at. We're looking at that suddenness. And that suddenness is caused... This one's different simply because the light source is coming here from the front. There's windows or something, so it's hitting it differently. So, like I said, you need that sudden darkness. And the way you get that inside Max is with a fall-off. And that's really all there is to creating a velvet. It's the trick is in that fall-off going in there. In this case, with this render, you know, there's no bump. There's nothing else. You can come in here, zoom in pretty good. It looks nice. Um, just to go over the material a little bit more, obviously it does have, in fact, in this one, we even left the reflection at zero. So there's not even any reflection on this material. Um, and that's the material which <laughs> we've been using for quite a while in uh, the office for making velvet. So, you know, you don't have to overdo and overthink materials sometimes to make them look good. You can just say, okay, does it work? Does this look like velvet? Yes, it does. Good. There's no reason to tweak it any further.